July 21st goes to Tarrant City Councilman John Tommy Bryant. John is from Tarrant, Alabama, and he's a city councilman, and he decided to use a racial slur during a public meeting this week. In fact, it was Monday night in Tarrant, Alabama, and John was being asked about controversial social media posts allegedly made by his wife about race. After being questioned, Bryant stood up. And well, let's go to CBS 42 for the report, please. In the past few months, we've shown you contentious moments at Tarrant City Council meetings, but tensions boiled over during a meeting Monday when neighbors questioned some recent comments by Council Member John Tommy Bryant and also Facebook posts from his wife about race. I mean, I know I'm black. Do we have a house nigger in here? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Residents who were there say they are still in disbelief tonight, even if Bryant was repeating comments made by someone else. Bottom says there's no excuse for Bryant to use the word, and she's calling on him to resign. Because he was way too comfortable standing up and using that word in front of a group of people of color. Councilor Tracy Threadford is also calling for Bryant's resignation, but he says he's not going anywhere. If you had the opportunity to redo yesterday, would you change anything? No. Mm. Why is that? Because I did what needed to be done. It needed to be brought to light what kind of a person the mayor is in the city of Tarrant. <sighs> I mean, listen, these are the things old white men can do that the rest of us wouldn't even think of doing. All right, you would not stand up as city councilman and say any slur about the LGBTQ community. You wouldn't do that about Jewish people. I don't think you would do that about Asians either. And if you did, it wouldn't be cause for you to resign like it is in the case of John Bryan. They would be kicking your ass out, all right, dragging you by your feet. Matter of fact, they'd be doing you the way Uncle Phil used to do Jazzy Jeff. But it's the caucasity for me because folks really know who they can play with. And blackness is something that's always being played with now. If you want to talk to me about what I do, you can talk to me about what I do. I'm big enough to take care of myself. Well, if you are saying that you are in your She said that in one, one of those words. Yeah. And she calls us black. Let's get to the N word. I mean, I know I'm black. Do we have a house in here? Yeah. Okay. Do we? Hey, do we? That's what Miss Freeman was called. Not That's what the mayor called her. What do y'all think about that? Huh? Y'all like that? In executive session, it was not any of us. I want to read something. I want to read. Trump, I want to read something else that Nancy Bryan posted. She says that we have a question where he lives. He owns multiple rental houses in Tarrant, but no one knows. But no one we have talked to knows where he lives. The address, the address given for him at one point is a rental with the Hispanic family living there. He told my husband he is rich and can live anywhere he wants to. This was after he belittled Tarrant and said only four people live here. He seems to think being mayor made him God. As for how he got elected, he advanced to pick up people who probably never voted before. He promised them things for their participation to get a black mayor elected. Not sure if he paid them anything or brought a meal for them to come. But there was van after van with this name on them coming to City Hall. Of course, they were all full of black smiley face. Okay. I mean, I agree with... Uh... All right, Shalom. This is our one by Nyasha Allah of the Lions Den Camp. I want to say, Ka Halayim La Yahawah by Hashim Yahushai. By Hashem Harakakwadash, my mouth. Double honor to the elder apostles of GMS and the elders. Shalom to you, Akim and Akwatim and children that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. Yeah, man, um, that just seemed like a bunch of uh, a drama. Watching a damn drama film. Um, a few things that stuck out to me. One immediately was the pride of Esau. Esau's pride, man, to, to be prideful because of their uh, status in the government, the connections, them being uh, Caucasians or Edomites. That's that's literally it. Their pride, what they've done to our people. That's where that comes from, you know. So they still hold claim to that. 
that'd be like somebody conquering a great uh, lion before, and they speak about it years later. That's how Esau is. They conquered our people, and they still use that. Because that's it. That's all they're known for. You know, is what they did to our people, even in the Roman Empire. All right, so then you got emotional-ass Jakes, man. That's why I wanted to play that with that woman running off like a, like a child. You know, she just ran off like a little baby because they see that they have no power, man. I don't care if they're in the council or not, Masonic or not, they, they have no power in Esau's world, especially that hair-headed, um, brown hair hat, whatever she was wearing, man. You know, with all the waves in it. Tapping a damn pencil. That shit ain't gonna work with Esau. Esau stand the hell up on your ass. Start using the N word. Show you ain't got no power. <laughs> you know, without your Howard, man, we don't have no power, man. So, um, yeah, man, he was he was um using his authority of being an Edomite. He pulled his Edomite card. That was as they should. You know, this is their kingdom, so he should be able to pull his Edomite card whenever he feel like it. Jake should stay out of their damn way. You know, so, uh, but he's going into slavery. And in our kingdom, we're going to do the same to them. But it ain't going to be brought up in the council. It's going to be charges put against them by Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai. And we're going to execute those judgments. And in the kingdom, he's not, he not even going to be allowed to look up at our women or look at our children. See that? A person like him, man, with all that pride, ever again. He'll never be able to do that again. All right? But I'm going to read a little um, article briefly. It says, um, from July 20th, Alabama councilman faces black backlash, <laughs> black lash, for racial slur. Do we have a house nigga in here? <laughs> That's what he said, man. You know. But uh, during a city council meeting Monday night in Tarrant, Alabama, member Tommy Bryant stood up and asked those gathered in the room, do we have a house in, the, in, the, in here? Bryant, 76. See, he was around, you know, 76. So he was around during those times. Of, of us being in, uh, coming out of slavery. All right, so he was born around 1945. So he was, he was, he was raised up and brought up in slavery. You know, us having our people enslaved. All right. Now it says, um, uh, Brian, 76. The longest serving councilman, <laughs> of course, because he got connections. He he probably doing he probably of course he's doing a horrible job. All right. Uh, the longest serving councilman uttered the offensive slur after an unidentified person in the audience noted that his wife used the N <clears throat> used the N word. On so on Facebook social media, All right? So if his wife used it, you know it's it's a word that gets thrown around in that house. Most likely, Mayor Wayman Newton, who is black, basically a Jake. Our people are not black, and has a turbulent relationship with Bryant. I mean, they always are, they always arguing. <clears throat> also commented on the social media post. Bryant then made it clear that his wife does not speak for him. <laughs> From there, he stood up. <laughs> See, he saw, man. And asked, do we have a house nigga in there? <laughs> uh, you gotta admit, man, some of them either might be funny, man, like Trump. They were real comical, like court gestures. But um, yeah, that was spoken out of his pride, man. You know, so only one that could break that type of pride and spiritual pride is the Lord. The Lord gonna break him down. All right, this is Deuteronomy twenty-eight, and um, 
36. And this is about the curses, us being brought over here into slavery. All right. And then within that slavery, Esau conjured up bywords and proverbs to call us, you know, nigger, wet, black, wet back, black, you know, that word black. That was a term that was brought up in the uh, 60s and 70s to pull away from the word nigger. All right. Because that's all they knew. That's all they called us was nigger Jim, nigger this, nigger that. Wasn't they uh, John Wayne? He came out with, uh, uh, in one of his books, he wrote nigger Jim. And that's when he started calling people by, the, by a name instead of just nigger. Like, hey, nigger. Hey, you, nigger, come here. And that's what that Edomite is stuck on. He had to be raised up that way. It's, it's, you could tell it's deeply embedded, embedded in his spirit, a deep-rooted hatred towards Jacob. Deuteronomy 28 and 36. Yahweh shall bring thee and thy king, talking about King David, which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation, neither thou nor thy fathers have known, and that happened with Esau. And thou shalt serve, and there thou shalt serve other gods with wood and stone. And by us doing that, our people serving other gods, or false gods, really, idols, the Lord has this happen to them, man. All right, it takes them to that point, wearing weaves, hair hats, being in the city council, can't even defend themselves because they're too busy selling out. Now they can't. They, don't, they realize they don't have a stick to fight with. All right, because they sold out so damn much. And you look at them, only Jake looked like they uh, beat down up there on the council. And Esau sitting back, standing up on them and shit. I had to do what I had to do. No, I don't. I don't I don't regret it. <laughs> so you feel like he didn't, they say, die on that mountain. You know, die with courage. He stood up with courage to a woman. <laughs> it's crazy, right? That's how Esau do, man. That's why you see um, the Moabite men beating our women. You know, but then you see the state of our, our women that are that are in the world, not the women in the truth, but the women that's in the world, they be studs and all kind of stuff, defending um these um alphabet organizations, you know, rainbow. With the rainbow is really biblical; it belongs to us, but they used it and took it for some, used it for wickedness. See, that's another reason. All right, but now 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment. See, our people became an astonishment. All right, uh, all right, let's get this word astonishment. It says, uh, thou shalt become astonishment. What? A ruin. A, it says, Shema. All right, a ruin. An appallment, man, I'm appalled by a horror, a waste of land, city, etc. All right, so we we become the horror film, man. That way you see the men of our nation walk around with their pants down, becoming women, um, all kind of uh, drug habits, disease, envy, hatred towards each other. That's what they call the crab in the pot. Brother hating brother, murdering. Robbing, stealing, and killing. Then you see the state of our women. Oh, and idol worshiping. Then you see the state of our women. Shit. Not even just that. Pagan worship, devil worship. You know, our people are heavy into that. The Christianity. All right. So the state of our women, you already know. You can run down the list with them as well. And they're the ones that still... Riding that wave of the curses, man. The curses are still in place. But the Lord said there's there's a rest where he, where he caused the weary to rest. All right. Ruin. All right. By implication, consternation. So um, it says, and thou shalt become a, in a, in a, a horror film, basically. Horrible to deal with. People don't want to. These nations hate us. All right, main nation on the earth don't know who the hell they are. 
a lot of East Edomites know who they are, or they're in their right state of mind at least, hating us. But our people seem to love them. Right, they love every nation but their own. That's what we call a house name, you know. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb. All right, what's a proverb? It's like almost like an analogy, a metaphor, um, a maxim. All right, a simile, a parable, a proverbial saying, um, an aphorism, sentences of ethical wisdom, a poem. All right, so basically like a mystery. All right. Um, calling us black, African, niger, or nigger, which would be niggerdom. <laughs> comes from the word nigger, but Jake seems to think it comes from the word niger. <laughs> it's confusion, man. All right, so are people going to become that? An astonishment. A proverb. That's why that girl ran off like that, crying. Boo hoo and snotting on her nose. I see posters all over social media. You see a woman crying like that, and she'll still be lying. <laughs> she ran off crying, <laughs> screaming all loud, trying to be more dramatic every time the dude was talking. That was, I, was, I want to play that, man, to show the state of our people. They're like children. Man, Esau was like a child. Look how he stand up and it's like being in class when he was little, elementary. Little eating my boy stand up across my nigga. It's like yo, know, <laughs> that's what this dude did. Like, you feel sorry? No, I don't. I did what I had to do. It says, uh, so our people, we became a b astonishment and a proverb and a byword. All right. So they calling you everything but a child of God. They calling you everything but an Israelite. Something pointed a guy. Uh, shun yana. A taunt. A word. A cutting word. A sharp cutting word. Whew. What's that sharp cutting word? Nigga. That's the one. That's the sharp cutting word, man. All right. And among all nations where the Yahweh shall lead thee. So the Lord uh, allowed us to be taken into captivity by these heathens, but they have no power. All right. Second Thessalonians 2 and 2. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us. As that the day of Yahweh Shai is at hand, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. See, we fell in 70 AD. And that man of sin be revealed. Those Romans, those Greeks, those Edomite pagans. It's like uh, Caucasians today, Edomites. The son of perdition, whoso opposeth, or who opposeth, and exalteth himself above all that is called God, showing himself that he is God. All right, and that's what they've been doing. It, from from it, the scriptures say we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high and low places. That city council is a low place, you know, compared to all those elites and the higher ups that run this country. He's a he's an imp demon, low level demon. Compared to uh, these other ones out here that, that run the world. All right, that's why they say, yeah, he thinks he's God. He, he jumped up like he's God or something. But he does. He thinks he's God, man. He, he look at look at the damn image they got up in most in most of the black churches. Caesar Bourget. You mean to tell me this man don't think he's God? The scriptures say, if not, where and who is he? You know. It covered the faces of the judges thereof. We're the true judges, not them. Okay. Um, Habakkuk 2 and 1. I mean, 2 and 2. 
And Yahweh answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that read of it. See, now everything's become plain to us the truth, the prophecies. All right, the understanding the Lord had given us in this time of grace, Yakanan, right? Um, so write the vision, the prophecies, and it's been written in the scriptures for us to come out of that niggerdom. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. See, even at the end, that, that wicked root is being revealed as well. Just like with Antiochus Epiphanes, he thought himself to be God. He even changed his name to it, Epiphanes. I think it means uh, God. All right. I'm going to get the, uh, the definition. But look what he did in 168 BC, boiling our people, killing our people, because he thought he was God. He thought he was the only power. But then the Lord showed him and broke him down, you know, after the prophecy of one of our people and the, and the child. Israelite a child and and a woman and her seven children, man. Uh, Jake, her sister. And she stood up to him. She didn't run off crying and whimpering. All right. Uh, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it shall, will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, his his soul, which is lifted up in him. So Esau has been lifted up with pride. All right, that's what make him stand up and be all bold like that. Well, that soul that's lifted up in him is not upright in him. So it's not righteous what he's doing. They they lifted up and boasting off of their wickedness. Yea, because he transgressed by wine through their philosophies, Christianity, demonocracy. Right, what they're pushing on that council meeting. Now they're moving towards communism here in America. Well, they're trying to create a communist state around the world, ruled by a one world government. But, hey, yea, also because he transgressed by wine, he is a proud man. So that's Esau, man. The pride of thine heart has deceived thee. It just did a lesson on this earlier, yesterday. They're prideful. Neither keep it at home. Who enlarges his desire as hell and is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gather unto him all nations and heap unto him all people. So that's what they've done. They've they've taken everybody into damn slavery. And even in this new world order, they're trying to take the whole world into slavery. All right. So um. All right. So why is his soul lifted up? Because of the stories of Alexander, the stories of, uh, uh, what's the name? I forget their names now. Andrew Jackson. You know, all these damn Edomites that conquered and killed our people. It was robbing, stealing, and killing. It says, uh, so this is why their soul is lifted up. This is how they got all their riches and their power and that authority seat and that. Uh, as Paul Mooney said, the compl complexion for the protection of the collection, being an Edomite. Sirach 10 and 8. Now, again, mind you, our people all, a lot of our people look like Esau, but, you know, this is not towards them. Because of unrighteous dealing, see, the spirit that's lifted up in him is not upright in him. Everything they deal with or dealt with, it was done in unrighteousness. All right. Injuries. Killing people, right? And riches got by deceit, man. What are they? Deceit goes back to the word devil. Gotten by the devil. The devilishness. That's what Esau is, man. They got rich through their deceit, through their connections and shit. The wolf protects the wolf. That's how they call it. The wolf protects the wolf in sheep's clothing. All right. They call it the family. It's a... Um, documentary on uh I think Netflix called The Family. You gotta look it up to where the wolf protects the wolf in sheep's clothing. Why is earth and ashes proud? So that damn Edomite, he's earth and ashes. 
just like the rest of us right now. But he's proud. He's proud because of their history, calling people nigga and all this shit. All right, so why is Earth and Ashes proud? Why? What happened? See that? They're proud because of their riches and everything they stole. Right here, verse 8, because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit. The kingdom is translated from one people to another. All right. Why is earth and ashes proud? There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. For such and one set of his own soul to sell, because while he liveth, he casteth away his bowels. All right, you know Esau sell out anyway. Two thirds of our people fall up under that banner as well, being sellouts, house niggas. This is Psalms 17 and 13, because you got a lot of those women that joined the councilman board. Councilman, you know, he's a councilwoman. It don't sound, it's just, you know, you had the whole woman's lib thing, you know, and uh, you have a lot of women that want to stand, sit up there on the council uh, board meeting with men. And they got husbands at home, but they'll be sitting at a council meeting arguing with a man. It might seem right to you because you're a woman, but but with Esau, he's going to show you. What? <laughs> he's going to use them sharp, cutting words. And you know how most of the women do this. They say, I'm going to get my husband to beat you up. You can't do that with Esau and his courts. You got to be able to stand on your own, like he said. He said his wife don't speak for him. You know, Psalm seventeen thirteen. Arise, O Yahweh, disappoint him, cast him down. See from their prideful seat, from their covetousness, from them sitting up on top of the rock where everybody drowns. Right, coveting everything to themselves. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. All right, so the Lord used them against us, as he said in Deuteronomy 28. Going to bring a nation against us, not just one or two. The whole nation is set up and um, has put this system into place so it will last forever, so they think. And it will continue to keep their nation in power and to keep the higher up Edomites, Amalek, it will keep them rich. All right, um, and keep these Masonic Edomites in power seats, like the council, the council board. From men which are thy hand, O Yahweh, from men of the world which have their portion in this life, man, through robbing, stealing, and killing. That's his portion. You know, up there lying, being stubborn calling people all kind of derogatory words, you know? And whose belly thou fillest with it, thy hid treasure. They are full of children. And he's one of their children. Going back to 45, 1945 or so. He's one of their children, man. All right? And, and they leave the rest of their substances to their babes, man. So a person like him had those uh that wealth from slavery probably passed down to him. That mindset of be, of being a, a what do you call um a Edomite supremacist, I should say. All right. Um. Yeah, nineteen forty five slavery. I'm gonna pull this up. That's when he was around. Timeline of slavery in America. All right. Slavery in America. 1939-1945. The German Nazi government uses wide slave, widespread slave labor in farming and industry. Up to 9 million people are forced to work. All right. Join the Kansas, Kansas City Monarchs of Negro League. Uh, yeah, man, because we wasn't really out of slavery until the 1960s. 
And you know that picture, that picture of Esau standing around with, um, I might just make that part of the backdrop, but that picture with a bunch of Edomites standing around and Jake hanging from a tree burnt up and they all smiling. Well, some of those Edomites could be this guy's uncle, you know, great, great uncles or great, great grandpas. All right. So um, this is a deep root of hatred, man. So they leave the rest of their substance to their babes, man. All right. So. All right. Kept speaking about his wife. Well, check this out. Usually their wives hate them. You know, the Edomites, you know, like, look at Melanie Trump or whatever. Job 27 and 14. If his children be multiplied, it is for the sword, and his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. Those that remain of him shall be buried in death, and his widows shall not weep. All right, so that's what's coming to them, man. That's what he has that pride for. It's that die-hard spirit, and that's what the Lord going to have him do. All right. Uh, so if their children were multiplied all around the world, but it's really for the destruction. All right. So the fact that Esau can, keep, can even call us those words, it's all prophetic. It's all it's all the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right, for the mystery of iniquity to reveal themselves and for them to show, them, show their horns. And so they can be put to shame. All right, Obadiah 1 and 2. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. So they're really the ones that's hated. They're the ones that go, go by a byword and proverb in, in, in our kingdom. They're going to be called Esau. It's going to be known that they are Esau. They're going to be revealed now. Or they're being revealed right now. The pride of thine heart has deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, the caveman, Caucasian, whose habitation is high. See, they like to lift themselves up over everybody. That saith in his heart. So they're saying this, this is what he's saying in his mind. Who shall bring me down to the ground? So he's like, yo, who, ain't nobody going to do nothing. I can say this word. Ain't nobody going to do shit. Because he knows. The higher ups that's over him, they probably his family. All right, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and thou set thy nest among the stars, this happened in the sixties and seventies. Thence will I bring thee down, say if you howl. All right. So um, Obadiah one and fifteen, for the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathens, and this guy's a heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thy own head. All right, so we're going to call them those words. As a matter of fact, Isaiah 65, um, I'll start from uh, 14. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall howl for vexation of spirit. So these, wo these women, these, these jakes that are in the world, of our people, the Lord is saying what his servants are going to eat and sing, not even eat, but the, fo the focus would be to sing for joy of heart, man, because we know the truth. All right, given by Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, we know who the mystery of iniquity is and that the judgment is coming to him. But two thirds of our people, they gonna, they want to cast judgment themselves. You know, they mad at the Lord, according to Obadiah. They say, wherein hast thou loved us? I mean, Malachi, Salaki. All right. Um, they say, wherein hast thou loved us? And they become enemies to the Lord. All right. But uh, he says, and so, so people like that woman, she was howling, crying in the damn courtroom. Getting louder every time somebody talk, you know what that is. Like, that's drama. All right, but in the kingdom, we're gonna call those Edomite devils 
by proverbs and bywords. Because in the kingdom, in a righteous kingdom, you're not going to be want to call the devil. You're not going to want to be an Edomite. It might seem like nothing now, but you hear that song that's going around. Am I an Edomite? It ain't right. Am I the heathen thou shalt smite? Yeah, Esau made that. Verse 15, and ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my people, unto my chosen. So the elect, man, just the one that go into the kingdom. Gonna be kicking their ass all the way into the kingdom, man. All right, calling them Esau. Devils. For Yahweh shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. All right, so we're gonna be called niggas and bride. Bywords and proverbs and astonishment, you know, but the uh, the hopeful elect will be called princes of the Most High. Matter of fact, All right. uh, Malachi three and eleven, and I will rebuke the devourer, the devourer, uh, er, from your for your sakes. Who's the devourer? Esau. They're the the lion that go about seeking whom they may devour. And he shall destroy the fruits of your ground, and neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time of Salaki. He shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vines cast her fruit before the time and the yield. Say, if you're Howard Ho, so in the kingdom, we're going to have giant fruit. That's how I tell my children. You know, the grapes going to be huge like a small basketball. And, uh, you know, and, and no, no heathen is going to show up to steal our resources like they're doing now. Being vagabonds in the earth, living out their blessing, robbing, stealing, killing, and uh, gaining the fatness of the earth through the sword. It says what? And all nations shall call you blessed. So Esau can call us blessed in the kingdom. All right. The rich man, Esau, gonna lift up his head in hell and destruction on the earth. All right. And slavery. That's what hell represents for them. And all nations shall call you blessed, man. They're not gonna call you niggas or spicks or whatever, man. Wetbacks. They're going to call us blessed, the chosen, the favorite of Yahweh. For ye shall be a delightsome land, say if Yahweh of hosts. So people are going to walk by and be like, wow, that's beautiful. Wow, look at them. Look at those people. But this is what's going to happen to Esau, all right? Isaiah 14 and 16. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee. <laughs> so all the nations that see Esau, Right, they're going to see us. They're going to say, oh, they're people blessed. All right. But they that see thee and shall narrowly look upon thee I and mean, really look at them and consider thee, saying, is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners, man? All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. So all the nations, they're going to get some form of living at the thousand years. But after that, you look at the condition of Esau, they're going to be like, yo, look at these devils, man. All right? And after that, they're going to be wiped off the earth by that final judgment for, for, for the Edomites in the kingdom. So all his words are vanity, and only a fool would believe it and, and be hurt by it. All, all right, so Esau, you know, Esau, all the kings of the nations, and even all of them, lie in glory. Everyone in his house, they're going to be basically paying tribute to us and, and, and paying homage to Yahweh Bashim Yahushua. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch. So Esau is going to be cast out of their, of their uh, you know, their rest. And as the raiment of those that are slain, 
thrust through with a sword that go down to the stones of the pit and there's a carcass trodden underfoot. Man. All right, so verse 21, prepare slaughter. What's like it? Verse 20, thou shalt not be joined with them in the burial. So, all right, Esau is going to be separated for destruction, man. Because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people, the seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, saith Yahweh, and cut off from Babylon the name, the remnant, and son, and nephew, saith Yahweh. Sheesh. All right. All right. So the original Egyptians were Cushites and Africans. Those are the nations against us. But now today Esau represents those Egyptians. And this is spiritually Egypt. All right. And they're the spiritual Egyptians, if you want to call them that. Exodus 11 and 7. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue. Against man or beast. That ye may know how that Yahweh do put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. So that still goes for today. All right. In reality, you got to know the reality, man. The reality is that they're the dogs. All right. And Esau not even be supposed to be sp speaking bad to our animals. Right? They're not supposed to speak against our beasts, our puppies and shit. So what's that? Uh, three fifths of the human, it's like they have had us in their kingdom, but they're gonna be on the lower totem pole than that. Obadiah one and eight: Shall I not in that day say if Yahweh even destroy the wise men out of Edom, and understanding out of the mountain of Esau, so that Esau has no understanding what the hell they're doing? They're a bunch of cavemen running the world, a bunch of children. You know, scripture saying children rule over us, man. They're child-minded, childlike heart. That's what they are, not in a good way, in a bad sense. Because you got a childlike heart being humble and easy to be led. That's not them. You, you know, you, can, you also have a childish ways, I mean, being a brat, prideful, all these different things, man. Spiteful. Or hurtful. He's using them sharp words. Can she stand up? <laughs> He's slick. He's saying she, meaning this woman. <laughs> they tried to call him that. He was unfazed. He's like, you're, you're the Nick. He was unfazed by it. He was like, can she stand up? He threw another curveball at him. See, and she took that to be directed towards her. All right. So if somebody jumped up in the room and say nigga and you're offended, then they talking to you. <laughs> this is the hit the hit dog gonna holler. Obadiah one Esau know that. Obadiah one and uh, and nine. And thy mighty men, O Teman, that the elites, you know, the think tanks, shall be dismayed to the end. That every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. He's of Esau. He's his future is to be cut off by slaughter. And he's at the age of seventy five. Well, hey man, you know what happens at that age? The scriptures say at seventy five we begin to grow weak and weary and so bogged down in these bodies and then um start uh pushing closely towards death. So he's gonna go see the Lord. And you're going to see that the Lord is a black man. We must all be, appear before the judgment seat of Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh Shai. And he's going to see that the Lord is a so-called black man. And he's going to realize he's been out here tormenting the Lord's people. And when he comes back to this earth to get his judgment um, in the future, he's going to be uh, um, in slavery. 
for a thousand years, man. Sound fast, but a thousand slow years. The Lord gonna slow down time. And they gonna slow down the mass with us. All right. Oh, he might speed up the ass whooping and slow down time. To the end that every one of the mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. That's it. They're going to be cut off by slaughter. Not just cut off. He said by slaughter. The cup that they've given to our people, the Lord going to give it to them. The judgment is going to be slaughter in the kingdom. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. 